Hi gang, it's Nanny Crypto coming to you today with a really exciting video regarding TradingView. Now there's a whole bunch of people over in the number one Bitcoin group. Shout out to all our friends over in that group. And a lot of you are newbies, a lot of, a lot of you haven't used TradingView before, so I thought I'd create a big a quick tutorial about how we use the tool and a few of the different um, options that we have within the tool to help us read the charts. Now I want to make it very clear, I am not here to explain the BOSS method. The BOSS method is exclusively from um, Brandon Kelly and that's what we've learned and if you want to learn the BOSS method you'll need to jump over to his chart like a BOSS playlist. Um, I am going to add into this video in the description I will add a link to the video where you can learn um, to set up the different lines and we'll talk about that in a second um, but I am not by any means going to take credit for his method and what he has taught us. I am here to talk to you about TradingView and how I use it and the different tools that I use that assist me to read the chart basically. So if we jump over to our screen, this is the boss um, and these are all the information he has. He actually has a playlist called Chart Like a Boss and it's got some really useful information for everybody on how to do trading. Like I said, I will be adding his link, the link to the specific video where he talks about how to set up the different lines within TradingView um, and, and I'll let him explain that. But once um, so for the people who have been using uh, TradingView or either new to TradingView or want to know how to use the different tools, that's what this video is about. So we are going to jump over to TradingView. Now this tool can be really useful for the people who want to basically predict if a coin is going up or down. Um, it obviously needs to be used in conjunction with either groups or news or accounts like Instagram or Twitter or even YouTube to find out um, what kind of news is out there on the market. But it's definitely a great way to see um, what a certain coin is doing. Now, up here, I'm going to start with the real basics. So, um, how do you search for a coin? So, the one thing I really try to do here is make sure that I've got selected cryptocurrency because it could if you choose all then you get a whole bunch of returns that you don't really want. So if I choose BTC it will basically tell me um, what BTC is doing. Now you can either do BTC against USD, BTC against Euro and basically gives you a whole bunch of options. And then on the right hand side there's actually all the exchanges. So say, for example, um, it actually doesn't give me the option to choose the crypto exchanges, but here we can see that this is for Coinbase, Foxbit, Bitfinex, um, a few other ones, Bitfire, Coinfor. So basically you just need to use whatever exchange that uh, you are more comfortable with. Um, so what we'll do is we'll do most of the explanation with our BTC charts and then we'll jump over to one of the Bitrix charts um, just so you can see how we compare, uh, say for example, a Syscoin or Vertcoin, Ethereum, Ripple, Litecoin, think coins like that to BTC. So we're going to jump onto Coinbase, which is the chart I already had open. So let's get into the nitty gritty. You have greens and reds. Now we spoke about this in our original video for beginners, but we're going to touch on it again. So basically the greens are your buys and the reds are your sells. So this chart is currently set up. Now here, right next to where we've entered the BTC, you can choose, very important to note, the version of TradingView that I'm using is a, is a free version. So even though here it gives you an option to change it, when you're running the free version, you can't change it. So the way I like to look at my charts, I use a four hour frame. And then if I'm in the middle of trying to decide whether I'm going to sell something or not, then I run down to the three or five minute just to look at it. 
So let's leave it to the four hours. Now over here, you can actually choose what kind of cut, how you view the chart. So I can do bars, you can do lines. Some people like to use lines instead of candles. Um, you can use areas. I personally prefer to use the candles just because I can see how many people were buying and selling. Now, if you really want to get into understanding a chart, you need to learn the different types of candles. Um, I know there are candles called hammers. I know it's important, like say, for example, here we have a really big green candle, which means a whole bunch of people bought. Then we have another one, then it kind of went down a little bit, but the red was at the top. That's good because it means it's not going to go down um, very significantly. So that's a whole other video of trying to understand how to look at the different candles. But that's basically what the greens and the reds are. Now, what I'm doing here, and this is really important, trying to, so if I move my mouse over here, I can basically make my candles bigger and if I move it over here so over here we've got our price which is against USD so currently I can see that the Bitcoin's worth 5758.35 and right under it I can see that there's one hour and 58 minutes to go to the next candle so every hour sorry every four hours because that's what I've set my chart to do it will create a new candle now if I bring that to hourly, chart changes slightly, but then you can see it's created one candle per every chart. So while in the previous chart we had a red here, here we have two greens. I'm just going to jump back into the four-hour chart. Okay, so here we have green. Now, what else can I show you? Um, indicators. Now, once you've gone over and looked at the BOSS method, you'll see that the indicators that are being used for moving averages. I don't want to save you. I want to search. It's playing up on me. Oh, there we go. That's what I wanted to say. Moving average yep so this is basically what I've added onto my chart um, which are these three lines so basically those three lines are set up using the boss method um, so don't ask me why I don't make it more days or less days I'm using the boss method and that's why it's set to that um, now the reason I've set it up with the green the orange and the red is because in his original videos that's what he was using right at the beginning. Um, those two messages that just popped up on the screen, they will pop up if you're using the free version of it. Um, so those, those are the three lines that he originally uses. So what he will call the 7, the 77, which is the O line, and the 21. However, um, in future videos, which I'm going to change it to so that I leave it set up as that, He's actually using the 231, which is the white line, and that's giving me a 231 day average. So it's pretty significant, whereas in the other ones, just giving me a 21 day average. So those are the three lines that I use green, orange, and white. Um, basic rule of the boss method is we sell, we buy when the green is above the orange, and we sell when the green is below the orange. Now as everything with the crypto market some of those rules are not set in stone. For example if you bought here then you would have held it all this time so down here it was at 3776 you could have held it all this time all this time all this time and then it went under at 5703. However you could have sold up at 6192 or 62. I think it made it to 6,200 on that peak. So it's just up to you. Now, this isn't a, I'm not going to tell you when to buy and sell because it has to be a personalized and very much a, each person has to decide when to buy and sell. So that's what the three lines are about. Again, if you want a more detailed explanation, 
um, you can jump into the boss method link in my description. Now, what kind of things do we use with TradeView? So, um, oh, the other thing is if you hold the mouse and just move it around, it can help you move the chart as well. So a few things either we move it this way and we move these lines or we move it this way, just whatever is comfortable for you. So a few things that I like to use. So I use um, the ellipses. Now the ellipses basically is a, I guess, a mark that you can use to put on your charts. Um, sorry. And then if you wanted to, sometimes they're a bit tricky. And if I want to put them, so it's just kind of, so we use those ellipses to mark something in our chart. Because keep in mind that whatever you do to your chart, you will actually keep them. Um, the great thing about trading views, if you close your computer today and you come back tomorrow, it will leave everything that you have drawn. So if you wanted to start from scratch, you can either hide them, which is this little eye over here, or using this delete button, you can actually get rid of all the drawings that you've done on your chart if you wanted to start from scratch. So that's the ellipse which we find over here. Now you'll find that on my trading view screen, I have a few stars. Now basically what these stars allow me to do is to add it and remove it from my favorites. And it basically is up here on the screen. So that's a really good way for me to instead of having to go and search for things. Um, so you can just use, so the ellipse was the one I was talking about before. We've got a triangle. I don't really use that one that much, uh, but let's just bring it up and see if I can bring a triangle that will make sense. Da -da -da. Um, yeah, oh, okay. I'm just going to keep that note. Actually, I might just jot it down. Um, we're going to come back to that one. So I can show you how the triangle works in a chart that I was looking at recently and it was very, very relevant. So we'll jump onto that chart when we go to talk about the, the triangle. And I'll show you that in a second. Um, we have this line. Now this line is really good. Now I drew this line for BTC just before it went down and this line is basic it's a trend line so with this little show and hide button here I can leave on or off the different the candles basically that's what it's there for but what I like to do is when I'm using my trading lines I get rid of them so what you do is you click on that line and you go from here Kind of down there and basically I'm saying this is how Bitcoin has been going since it did the dip back in September the other thing you can do is if I go back into my arrow and I click on that line and you go control C control V you can do a parallel line here and you can basically say so what are these trend lines used for these trend lines now it's very girly I just like the color it's nice and bright so these trend lines are basically used to tell me while Bitcoin is within this channel I can say that it is consistently on an uptrend now if I turn on the candles and go a bit deeper I can say yep yeah, it's definitely still within that channel it's now these little lines that you can see, like these little candles that show up here and over here, are not that significant. However, so right now Bitcoin hasn't decided what it's going to do. Everyone's, it might go up, it might go down. Now, there's another one we like to use, with this, which is our brush. If Bitcoin does something like this, it's just going to keep on going up. Most people are saying it's going to hit 7,000, which would be around here. However, if Bitcoin does the opposite and decides to do this, then we'll definitely know it's broken the trend line and it's on a downward trend. And right now, I really can't call it. It's, it's difficult to decide, especially because 
BTC, so the fork happening on the 18th of November, finally got that date, so 18th of November, which is a Segwit 2x fork, and anything could happen. It could go down, it could go up between now and then, we really don't know. So that's basically what we use the brush for. It just kind of tells us what it's doing. And then the other one I really like to use is the horizontal line. So this horizontal line to me is just kind of a way for me to keep an eye on if if my Bitcoin does this or if my Bitcoin does that, should I sell or should I buy? Now, if I go down, so we're on a four hour chart, which is good. So these are the ones that I was telling you about, that these are the messages that you get because I'm running the free version. Sorry, didn't mean to put that line there. And you just need to move the chart a little bit over so that when I draw the line, it makes sense. Now, I believe Bitcoin has a really strong support here. Why do I believe it has a strong support? Because right here, back in early October, it had quite a bit of problem going up. And then it actually bounced off this same line back in September. So to me, that is a strong support. I believe if it gets down there, it's time to buy again. If you have fiat lying around, it would definitely be a time to buy. Because of, it always does that, because of what we have over here in our blues, we still don't know. So if it goes down, some people are saying it's going to go down to 4,000. There could be another support line. probably around here, it's around here, which is 4,200, roughly about 4,200. But I think if it went down to 4,800, then I'd probably buy in there. So as you can see, these, these, so this line I got from over here, and it's called the horizontal line. And that line just basically allows me to decide when I'm getting ready, and I use that line for a few of the different charts, but I find that line quite useful. So that is our, so we've talked about our ellipsis, uh, triangles we'll talk about in a second, uh, trend lines we've spoken about, horizontal lines, we'll get back to these two in a second, brush I've spoken about. Um, just trying to think what else is really important. Obviously, there's a lot of tools. You've obviously got to sit, open it, go through it to understand it. Um, so another two that I like to use is the date and price range. So if I go into this one, you'll see the date and price range right there, which I have in my favorites, and this is what I use it for. So if I, I like to see what my candles are doing, so I like to get rid of that. So we're just going to get rid of these support line and get rid of these blue lines for now. And we are going to see. Now, last time Bitcoin dipped, it went down to about 5,100. So if you wanted to know how far, I'm just going to get rid of, uh, actually, no, we don't need to get rid of the candles. How much did Bitcoin go up the last time it did a huge dip and how long did it take? That's basically what this chart shows me. So if I go, from here all the way to up there, it tells me Bitcoin went up 21% and it took three days. So the, the reason I, yes, I know I don't have any ads, but I'm not paying for it. So the reason I, I really like this tool is there are going to be charts where you, you are trying to decide whether you want to sell or not. So if I know a chart's gone over, so every time it's gone up, it's done 100%, 200% in a few days or, say, in a few weeks, then if my coin's only done 10 or 15%, which in my books anything over 10% is good, I'm, I will wait because I know that it's got the potential to get up to 20 or 25%. So that's why it's really, really good. And then the good thing about this as well is I can just click on it again and do it over here and go, yep, the last time it went up, in less time, went up 22% in just a little over a day, a day and four hours. So that information can be really useful for you 
if you want to figure out now not only can you use it so I'll show you if I just get rid of that one it's it's mostly used for that but if you wanted to do a prediction and say okay so I'm not saying Bitcoin's going to do this because I actually think it's going to go down but if say I wanted to do a prediction similar to that so I know my average is about 20 percent let's just use this one which is three days so if Bitcoin was an uptrend this orange line being here kind of doing this curve on the way down tells me it's not but if it was then I could say three bars about 20 percent three bars sorry three days about 20 percent puts me there so that to me would tell me that Bitcoin could reach 6,597 within three days again not saying Bitcoin's going to do that but this is what I use this tool for it's actually a really useful tool and it's good to either predict or it's good to know what the coin's history has been because the really important thing to note with TradingView is the further back you go the more history you're going to get you know we can go back here to January February 2017 you know 2016 what was it doing nothing it's only till this year that it actually spiked you know and hit over a thousand dollars it was worth about eight hundred dollars last year so all that information is really useful when you try to decide what are you going to do when are you going to buy it obviously bitcoin's a bit more complicated not because the charts don't work but because with bitcoin you've got to think it's very influenced influenced by um fud news by what people are saying about it and even though we wouldn't want it to be, that is a fact. So it's something we need to take into account. So even though sometimes a chart might say it's on the way up, it doesn't always happen. So with Bitcoin, you've got to be really, really careful. Now, the other really cool tool that I like, so I've got a bit too many lines on at my chart at the moment. So I'm just going to clear all the chart, all the drawings for now. And that was just my button over here. I'm going to run a quick Fibonacci on you. So this is the Fibonacci retracement. And what that does is it gives you levels of what the coin's actually doing. Now if I run, so what I like to do when I'm doing my Fibonacci is I get rid of my candles. Click on my Fibonacci and go from breakdown to break up. Now you can use it with that one or you can actually do it crossing where the orange is crossing so and it really depends on um, whether you're so sometimes when you're running these charts I'll tell you where you would decide to do it differently if say the Bitcoin's gone all the way down here so let's just say it's living in this area at the moment then this chart isn't really going to tell me exactly what it's doing so what I try what I try to do is I move this chart down to the dip okay so that's what I do now here is what we use with the Fibonacci. The Fibonacci tells me now anything within the green area, within this area here, tells me it's the money zone. It's basically telling me it's going to keep, it's on the way up, basically. Unless you, of course, see it do this, but if it's in the money zone and it's on the way up, it's going to keep going up to probably the, the um, 0.786 or, and then if I bring this down, you'll see values up here as well. It tells you two times, three times what it was at. So it takes a little while to get used to, to this Fibonacci. However, the reason I wanted to show you this, if you guys remember, I said that the support line was at 4,800. Smack on the dot 618 is the 4,800. It's just right in the middle. So apart from there being a Fibonacci line and I'm not going to go into Fibonacci's um, too much, but basically the Fibonacci will tell us, I think will give us an estimate on, um, so you know that if it's gone under that, it's broken. Um, you know, you know if it's just gone over that, then hopefully it will keep going up. So it just gives you a, I guess, um, different stages on when you can look at the cone. For example, if I bought Bitcoin here, then I can say, for example, um, See, our next line is up at 7,200. So I can say, if I buy it here, I'm, when it hits 7,200, then I can sell it. 
That's basically what the Fibonacci is used for. Again, it takes a lot of patience and you have to use it quite a bit to get used to it, but Fibonacci is a great tool to help you estimate what um, the ups and downs are doing, basically. I love it how every sad time I say I'm going to make it a short video and it becomes into a 25 minute, half an hour video. Trading View has got a lot of cool stuff, so I didn't want to rush through it. Now, one last thing that we're going to talk about is I'm not going to forget about the triangle because that is a very useful tool as well. So I'm going to jump into, so we're going to jump into our area over here and we're going to select Quark which is a coin that I'm keeping my eye out for. Now, if you see this chart, you will see that I've drawn the triangles. Now, the reason I drew these triangles is because I believed that, so it's done, I still have my horizontal line turned on. So it's actually done this great spike twice. So when the three lines have met, it's spiked like, so if this says 1, that means it did over 100%. And then it went all the way back down, and then it spiked again here. And if I turn on my candles, you'll see that it actually reached a lot higher than what the triangles show, as my triangles are only showing the green. That one needs to be a little bit higher. Um, but these triangles basically show you, so just to give you an idea. Now, the reason that's here was because when I drew these triangles was back in the beginning of October and we were hoping that the three lines would meet and it would spike again. However, it hasn't done yet that yet. The orange has met with the green, but I think once this line comes down to here, I think it's going to have another spike. So I'm just going to delete, uh, actually let's delete this triangle on this side, see if it lets me highlight it. We select our triangle. And then basically you go from here to here to here. And that's how you draw a triangle. And basically the triangles are used um, to set a pattern. Really important thing, guys, every single coin is different. And they each have their own patterns, their own guidelines, their own history. Once you know the history of the coin, once you know the patterns the coin has, then you can follow it through. Is it bulletproof? No. Is it 100% going to make you a profit? Absolutely not. You're in the cryptocurrency market, which is a very volatile market with a whole bunch of, you know, FOMOs and FUDs, um, just a whole bunch of things that influence the market from news to somebody doing a post on Twitter. So anything could influence the market. But the idea of knowing how to read these charts is that at least you know when to get in the game at least you know when to buy um, you may decide that you'll sell at 20 percent using so let's just say i bought down here and if i was using my fibonacci i could say hey i've made 50 percent. i'm happy with that but if i knew how to read the charts then i know no no the green so if i turn on my candles again and just try and it's going to be really hard to read these charts with these on and I really don't want to take them off because I'm actually keeping an eye on this coin but basically if you know how to read the charts then instead of you selling and missing out on winning then you can see you know here for example you can see one green after the other you wouldn't sell then when you start so it's gone green above orange you'd keep it you'd keep it Right now you've made, whatever that is, uh, probably about 40%. You can decide to sell. Once you start seeing the red ones, you go, nope, I'm happy with my, it might have gone down to 35%, I can sell. So that's what these charts are there for, to help you, to guide you, basically so you can earn the money. Now, I hope that it all makes sense. I know it's really confusing. Please dive into TradingView play with it, use it, look up your different coins, see how your coins are doing. Look, as a tip, I use it each and every single time I go to buy a coin. I don't buy a coin without looking at the charts, without knowing what it's doing, what its history is, what its patterns are, so that I can decide 
whether it's very time to jump in or it isn't. Gang, I really hope you appreciate this video. There's a whole bunch of people asking me about TradingView and how to use it. I hope it helps. Please remember to like the video, subscribe to our page and share our videos. Till next time, thanks for watching. Bye.